Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I designed and built a door operated dome light. Stay tuned. I have been looking everywhere online for a door actuated dome light. I have come up with absolutely nothing. All of the dome lights that I've been able to find were either a Velcro on light that is battery operated with a switch on the light or some other method of having a switch on the light. The problem that I'm having with this type of dome light is with the switch up in the headliner, if I can see to turn the switch on, I really don't need the dome light to begin with. So what I'm going to be doing is installing a switch on each door so when either door opens, the dome light will come on. There will also be a manual switch on the dash to either completely turn the light off and there will also be an option to turn the light on when you're driving with the doors closed. So I've been taking a look at this door frame trying to find a good spot to mount a possible bracket or even a door switch. Uh, and what I've been finding is something like this area here with the plastic that meets up with the door, uh, that has the rubber strip of the door and it's really flexible. Uh, and the switch that I purchased is actually just pushing in the, the rubber here. It's not actually pushing in on the switch. So my options are kind of limited to having to be pushing in on the actual door itself. What I've noticed is I have two bolts here. Uh, these bolts are connected directly to the frame and what they were for is the bar that came down and around here. Now the Ranger when we got it didn't have that bar uh, so you may have to take that bar off uh, but in this case we don't have the bar but we do have these bolts so we're going to use this as our switch mounting plate. So just taking a look at some of the parts that I got to complete this I do have a light this was a pack of two that I got on Amazon this is a 340 lumen LED light I've seen other LED dome lights for cars that are around 300 lumen. This is 340 lumen, so it, this shouldn't be too bright that you're having to squint when the light's turned on. A couple other things that I have is some 14 gauge red and black wire, uh, inline fuse and fuses. I also got this dome light 10 pin switch. We'll be using a 40 amp 4 pin relay. And these are the switches that I got. I got these on Amazon. I will put the link in the description. How the switch is going to work is going to be a negative shutoff, so I will have constant 12 volt hot power going to the light, and the negative side of the light is actually going to be actuated by these switches. Just one note on these switches, they do not come with the bolt and nut. Those are five millimeter bolts, and it's roughly an inch long. Just a couple of other things to have is some miscellaneous wire connectors. I do have some heat shrink tube and some zip ties. As for the bracket that I'm going to be using, I did have this piece of angle iron laying around. This angle iron is 2 inches by 1 and 3 eighths. As far as I can tell, nothing like this has ever been created or manufactured. So I did have to kind of make this up on my own. Uh, as far as the design, I did make a couple of drawings here just on the computer. I will put these drawings on the screen here so you can just pause and take a screenshot if you like. But these brackets that I'll be making is going to be two brackets. Uh, they'll be basically identical. They'll just be inverted for the opposite sides of the doors. And then here's the wiring diagram. What I found to be a really good position for this is actually up in this rail here, up on toward the roof. There's a slot in that which happens to fit this light really well. So this is going to be the placement of the light. So to remove the roof, there are four bolts on the back side of the Ranger. Those are T40s. Then there are three more bolts on the interior. Those are three T25s. Okay, now that we have the four in the back removed, we can come inside and take the three bolts out that are up in the top of the roof. Okay, so now that all of the bolts are taken out, we can go ahead and take the roof off. Uh, in order to take this roof off, it might be hard to see, but there is a clip on the inside of the back. That needs to get pulled backwards out from the outside and then it can lift up.
Now that I have the roof removed, I'm just going to do a quick measurement to find the center of this frame piece where I'm going to be drilling my hole for the light mount. Looks like it's 51 inches across there. Just cut that in half, 25 and a half. I'm just going to use the punch to get a point started here for the drill. Looks like 5 sixteenths is going to do the trick for that bolt. Alright, now that the hole is drilled for the light itself, I can come back in with my bolt and get that secured. For this particular light, the bolt side is a 14 millimeter and the nut is a 13 millimeter. So just following my diagram here, the length of each bracket needs to be two and a half inches long, so let's get that cut out first. Okay, now that I have my two two and a half inch pieces cut out, I'm just going to take this to my sander and just clean up the edges. Alright, so while I was cleaning up the edges around here, I also while I was doing that, I rounded off all of the corners as well as just roughed up the surface so it'll be ready for paint. Okay, now that I have my two brackets, I'm just going to reference the plans that I had made out for where to drill the holes. Just gonna come in 5 eighths of an inch. Same thing from the other side. Just coming in 5 eighths. So when you are finished, the distance between these two holes should be one and a quarter inches. Then from the outside edge of the angle iron, we're going to come in three quarters of an inch for our center of hole. Now that I have that drawn out on the first one, I'll just draw out the same thing on my second bracket. Before I start drilling, I'm just going to use a center punch to define my holes. The holes for this bracket need to end up with a quarter inch hole for each of these. I'm just going to start this off with a smaller pilot hole and then I'll move up to the quarter inch. Okay, now I've got my small pilot holes drilled out, I'll come back with my quarter inch bit and finish these off. Now I'll just repeat the same process with my second bracket. So just checking my measurements, uh, having this bracket sitting right on this plastic here isn't going to give me enough clearance to clear this rubber weather stripping here. 
So I am going to need a washer that's underneath this just to lift it up about an eighth of an inch. What I'm gonna do is just cut out a piece of the same angle iron to have underneath it and I'll drill those same quarter inch holes. It'll just act as a washer. Okay, now I have my two brackets made, and I also have my two washers created for the brackets that'll go underneath. Next step is to drill the two holes for the switch. The larger of the two holes is going to be a 10 millimeter, and the bolt is going to be a five millimeter. Now up till now, all of the measurements and drilling has been symmetrical for each side. This is the first time that the drill holes are actually going to be inverted of each other. Uh, for the driver and passenger side, as you can see in the diagram. So here I'm going to come in one and an eighth inches. And then from that mark, I'm going to come down three eighths of an inch. Then these can be drilled out with the 10 millimeter. Now, according to the manufacturer, the separation between these two holes is 15 millimeters. I don't have anything to measure 15 millimeters, so I'm just gonna put the switch into the first hole, and then I just take a marker and draw where that second hole needs to be. Okay, I've got those marked, now I'll just get those drilled out with the 5mm. Okay, I've got those drilled out now and just test fit the switches into their positions and everything's looking good. Now that we have everything drilled out and fitting in place, we can go ahead and mount the brackets to the Ranger. Now we can just check our clearances if we come in here and close the door. Just making sure that this weather stripping isn't hitting the switch itself, which it is not. Another thing to check is when the door is completely shut, that these points are disconnected, which it looks like they are. Now we'll just do the same install on the other side. Now that I have both switches mounted in the Ranger, I'm going to leave this all just snug down and not yet painted. I'm gonna move on to the electrical now. Now that we have all the hardware installed, we can move to the electrical side of the system. So just taking a quick look at my drawing, I do have a few jumpers that I need to 
put on the back of the switch that is just going to jump a couple of the pins to each of the other pins. The proper connectors for this, these are quarter inch male connections. So what I have here are some quarter inch crimp on female connectors. So for these jumper wires, I'm just going to cut the wire about two or three inches long just so that they have enough room to loop back and connect right back here. On my diagram here, I have these yellow lines connecting different pins on the switch to other switch pins. Those are jumper wires. We just need to make small jumpers like this and connect those as you see there. One thing to note, if you do see another wire coming off of this diagram, you just need to make sure that you have an additional wire coming off of that jumper, which will then route down to the power or the relay. So for the wires here that you can see going out of my switch and for instance this one's going to my power bank where there's going to be the ground connection, I'm just cutting that wire long. I know this is more than I'm going to need. Uh, so once I actually have the switch installed I can just cut this one to length. This remaining ground wire here that I have going to my light. I'm going to leave that one off right now and I'll run that from the light back to the switch. Now that I have all my ground side set up, I will work on my power side. Okay, and this is the general idea of what the switch is going to look like once it is all wired up. The other wires that I've left long, I am just going to strip the ends and I will leave the connectors off of that until I'm ready to install. Also before taking the switch to the Ranger, I'm just going to make a little mark on here just to notate uh, the up and down position of the switch. Uh, that is going to matter when it comes to in putting on our actual cap of the switch and uh, making sure that this is in the correct direction. Now that the switch wiring is set up, we can move to the light wiring. As you can see by the diagram here, I need one hot wire coming off of the light. This wire is going to go up under the hood of the Ranger where the relay is going to be positioned. Then I'll have a black negative wire, one coming down to each of the door switches, and then one going back to the dash switch. Now that I have the wire connected to the door switch, I will run that up. I'm just making sure that there's going to be plenty left over that I can cut it down and get it all tucked away so it won't be seen. The two remaining wires that we need to connect to our light itself are both going to come down through the cab and up under the hood. Uh, so I'm going to run the red and the black wire at the same time here. Coming up to the front of the Ranger, I'm going to first remove the hood and run the wires from the front of the Ranger back up through to the light. Now that the hood is removed, I'm going to remove the front windshield as well as the top dash panel. To remove the dash, it's just as simple as removing these four push connectors. Okay, with the four push connectors removed, you can just remove the top portion of the dash. I have the defroster vents here, so I'm just going to disconnect those hoses to get the dash completely out of the way. And now the final remaining piece to remove is this center plastic here, which is also just held in with four more of these push tabs. 
Now on my particular machine, I do have this aftermarket heater installed and these hoses that are coming out of here does run through this middle column here. Uh, so I'm not gonna be able to completely remove this, but I should be able to get it out of the way enough. If you don't have that aftermarket heater installed, then you should just be able to pull that portion completely out. Now that all the plastic is removed, I can take my wires and begin running them from the hood section here, which right where these other wires are, there is a power bus. That's where everything is going to be terminated to. Now to get these wires back up to the light how we want them, we're gonna route them down through the outside of the firewall, not through the dash quite yet. The wires going through the dash will be only for the switch itself. Okay, so I have the wires pulled up through the firewall now, and I'm just going to continue routing them through the plastic here. Now that I have my wires up to the point where I'm meeting up with my other door switch wire, I am just going to take that wire and start routing it up with these remaining wires. So now I've got all of the wires that I need ran up to my light. I will take my three ground wires, my two doors and one going back to the switch, terminate that to the black wire coming out of the light, then terminate the red wire I have coming up here to the red wire coming out of the light. All right, once I have the wires all pulled back up to the spool here uh, and nice and tight, then I'll go down underneath here and zip tie the wires back just so they're not gonna be hitting any hot components or moving components. So working back in the cabin here, at this point we need to get one of the cutouts completely removed for the switch to go in. So there's a couple of different ways to remove this. Uh, you can use a Dremel tool if you have a Dremel tool to cut around this line. Uh, I'm just going to use a utility knife to cut this out. This is really pretty soft plastic. Okay, at this point it's important to just take note of where we marked our top of switch to make sure it's in the correct position. Then you can just feed the wires through and snap it into place. After that I can install my switch. That just snaps into place as well. And all the wires that came from the switch, you can route through the dash and through the hole in the firewall. The black wire that we ran from the light to the hood can now be routed through the firewall to the switch. With this black wire now having a connector, we can add it to our switch. So now I'm gonna get my inline fuse ready. And for this install, I'm using 20 amp fuses. So 
This fuse is going to be powering the light, so this is what we're going to connect directly to the constant power of the Ranger. Okay, so we are going to have two wires that are connecting to the constant power. If we look on this power bus here, we have three connections. The center connection is the ground, and then our other two connections are a constant hot power, and the third one is hot power only when the switch is turned on. And it looks like the connection on the far passenger side is the constant power. So that's where we're going to be connecting our fuse, as well as the center connector that's going to our switch. The other side of my fuse is going to get a female crimp connector. And this connection here is what's going to connect to our relay. And for our ground wire, what we need is one wire going to the relay and another wire coming from the switch. Now the last connection that's going to be connected to the power bus is this bottom left connection on our switch. Then the remaining red connection coming out of the switch is going to get a female crimp connector which is also going to go to the relay. Now we can grab our relay and start making our connections to this. As you can see in the diagram, the relay has numbers associated with each connection and you can see those labeled on the actual relay itself. So now you can just trace your wires back from their sources and associate them to the correct pins on the relay. Now the only thing that we should have left are the three connectors that are going to be connected to the power bus. And in my case, to pull these nuts off the power bus, I'm just using a 3 8 socket. Okay, now that we have the switch all wired up, all these extra wires we can tuck in behind the dash. Just gonna do a double check, make sure everything is working as it should be. If I turn the light to the on position, which is straight upwards, the light should come on. Back to center, the switch is completely off. Then if we put the switch in the downward position, this should be set to when the doors open. Now just closing the door, the light turns off. Just gonna do that same check with the other door. Now I'm just gonna go through and zip tie back all of the wires that are in the dash, under the hood, and then under the Ranger. Now the dash can go back in. If you have the defrost vents, make sure that you reconnect those uh, to the tubes that are coming out of the dash. Once the dash is back in position, you can replace the four push connectors. With the dash in place, next thing to go back is the windshield. And go ahead and put the hood back on. Back on the inside of the cab we can replace the four push connectors holding down the center plastic. And last but definitely not least, let's give these brackets a nice paint job. There we go. Alright guys, there you have it. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more projects.